Yes, beautiful people. How are you? Yeah, let me get that link and share it. Bring you all on board. How are you? Going live and live we are. That's right. Talk to the camera, Francis. Talk to the camera. Here we go, which uh, chaps going live. Uh, so I wanted to get back to you. I said over the weekend I was going to get back to you um, on the trade wars thing. That little old uh, puppet show. I've actually got a lot of things uh, of some value. I've even taken notes. There might be some logic to my stream of consciousness. There may be occasional breakouts of rational thought involved in the making of this production. Yes, indeed. How are you guys doing? It is Monday evening. Monday evening. Yes. Ooh, timing wise, it's coming up to a critical part of the year. Look at that semi-psychopath portrait picture. It sort of caught me in between snarling and putting my hands out. How's everybody? Um, so we want to talk about China versus Trump versus Trump's America. Paul, how are you? Good to see you. Um, and the uh, this is what's happening. So apparently, apparently, there were calls or there weren't calls. You see what happened is uh, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, um, every time he wants to create a little bit of hype and fear, I'm going to do this to China. I'm going to do that to China. Oh, the trade war, the trade war heats up. Market all wets the bed. That's falling for it every time. And then, then when everyone goes, okay, you've done enough. Kissinger from under the table. Okay, Donny, wind it back a bit. Um, da, 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 on his little old uh, Blackberry. And Trump goes, no, no, no. We just had a call from China. We're going to do a deal. Uh, and he starts uh, calming it all down uh, again. Uh, this is absolute drill running of a fear-based reflex on people that you expected to take seriously, that are supposedly serious managers of entire nation states. Uh, and it's an absolute and complete puppet show. I mean, imagine if you were the premier of China and you're listening to this on and off again guy. It's kind of like a guy in a pub calling you out for a fight and then going, no, 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 no. Okay, look, we can check on it. All right. And then as you back off and start walking away, he says, but you look like a bitch from here, man. I could take you out. And then you turn around again and he goes, yeah, but maybe tomorrow. Um, and it's like, what? this flipping punch and Judy garbage economic equivalent of uh, absolute nonsense. Hey, big chungus, Francisco Gomez. That's a beautiful name. Uh, that's a beautiful name. Uh, the Hispanic version of my good self. Uh, into the fire, indeed. Appreciative videos. I appreciate doing them. I appreciate having you here. Okay, let's have a drink of water. So it's this whole little, it's so childish, it's so immature, it's beyond parody. Um, and there is something going on. And there's going to be a major readjustment at the currency levels for certain places required. And it's going to affect South Korea and China. Um, and they are going to do what I would call competitive devaluation. So I think the debt scene and everything um, over there can't be looking uh, that amazing. The economy can't be looking that amazing. And this whole trade wars thing, is, it's kind of like, yeah, stoke the nationalism, stoke this, stoke that. Um, but it's a bit of a meme that the currencies that are going to be strong are the yen and the dollar. So there's going to be a little bit of what's called as dollar milkshake theory, where um, they actually amazingly, despite extremity proliferation of dollars, when you compare it to the amount of debt in all these other currencies, those people that have done debt released in dollars, when they have to retire that debt, they actually need to retire it in dollars. So there'll suddenly be a requirement to absorb dollars in Europe and all of these other places. And to a degree, the yen's going to be an even bigger beneficiary of that because it's kind of got a fear index and they hold all their own debt. So they do not have a debt, a dollar-based problem. Um, in actual fact, uh, they have a savings problem in their community that keeps buying all their government's greater debt. So what you're going to have is you're going to have the yen and the dollar on one side doing exceedingly well. And you're going to have this supposed fallout where... Uh, Tariffs and things like that being added and raised will end up having an effect 
on China's trade, uh, their growth. And what they're going to do is, well, we'll just make our stuff cheaper and keep making ourselves cheaper so that we can hang on to that advantage that we got. And the way they do that it will be supposedly currency dev devaluation, which will be called manipulation by Trump. And so the argument um, will carry on and carry on. And uh, this is the trade war. But there's also an underpinning of tech war. There's an underpinning of a tech war. One minute, I'm getting blowback on the noise here uh, on my live stream. Turn the volume off. And he's back. And he's back with a curt word. Um, so what's happening is uh, with all of this uh, fascinating thing, there's also a tech war going on. Now, what many people haven't realized or heard is that you wait for it on the tech side, China wants their own version of Android. In fact, it has a name. It's called Harmony. There you go. Far less bot-like and uh, AI-like and screen scrape and um, data mining. This is kind of like a yoga class. Um, toiletries for ladies for below the belt line. It's Harmony. It's lavender and uh, all these fragrant things. Um, yes, indeed. Uh, that is them. And guess what? This big blowout for Huawei uh, and all of this and the 5G. Well, first of all, they can't be stealing all your stuff. Even if they did, you went there because you wanted cheap production. What do you expect? If you invent the wheel and you take the wheel to the other tribe to build your wheels for you, they're going to say, hey, this is useful, this thing that rolls. <laughs> so, yes, you know, uh, America stole all the tech from Britain and uh, China will steal it from them. And it's absolutely natural. And they've improved it. And uh, actually, you can't blame. You know, I swim the mid-mile mile. Uh, and I used to swim and you'd have guys in front of you and behind you and trying to swim over you. And we've got to do this mile and this damn thing. You know, uh, you can grab the guy in front of you's legs and get a bit of a pull and go forward. But when you're in front, you can't go forward pulling the guy behind you. You know, uh, so if you were ahead on 5G, you're no longer the copier, you're the lead innovator. Um, so some of the stuff that's going on um, is a little bit bizarre. And I'm wondering if all this attack on Huawei, Huawei, say it however you like, um, uh, Huawei, uh, it all is contingent, actually, not just about the 5G. The 5G might be uh, a particular element. They know there's a lot of bad press. There's alternative media on the 5G, how it's frying trees and everything else, including our future brains and our kids' brains, uh, drop their IQ like the fluoride in the water thing um, and do all of these horrific things to developing kids. They're up for all of that. No, it might actually be that they'll no longer, because Android and Apple are backdoor CIA, FBI, dark state, dragnet, mining your face, your picture, your identity, your likes, your commercial data for selling, your privacy data if you ever get awkward and start a YouTube uh, channel and start calling them out and calling them psychopaths and Zionist bastards so that you can top them. Um, you have it all. You know where they live. You can do all of those things. Yes, something like that. Um, and so what's actually happening is it's a bigger problem that they're changing the operating system and the platform. If you go harmony, um, then uh, suddenly by proliferating the devices and not using the operating system, the Western dark state now no longer gets all the information and now the Eastern of China gets it all. So I wonder if all this blow up on Huawei and 5G is also about or more about the actual fact that Android and iOS are no longer going to own um, the uh, end user. It might be a good idea to use a Huawei phone. Give your data to China. What use is it to them? Um, it's better that their dark state has it than yours. Hey, I ain't asking to live in China. I ain't asking to have them as government. Um, you know, they'll have you as organ donor almost as fast as the Israelis in Tel Aviv. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, it's something to think about. Anyway, let's just say hi to uh, Gematria, Francois Leroux. Hey, yes, indeed. Helmet Blister, yes, how are you doing? Um, uh, appreciate it, he says. Uh, Francisco, Francis, those CCL and WFC shorts, time frame, just regular shorts or puts possible too? Puts possible too. I'm looking at purchasing puts 
uh, on a number of things. And one of them, I'm still waiting to hit my number of retweets and shares, a very big faller. Um, I would see potentially it's north of $20, potentially falling below four. That would be amazing. Come reset uh, moment for that particular equity. I'm ready to share it with you. Maybe in the future, my premium guys all have it. By the way, for those of you booking calls, I truly wish I could speak to every single one of you. We can help you in almost any way. We have a low cost product that is self-study that still gets you a Sunday session of interaction and a non-farm payroll. And in the non-farm payroll, you'll also have a crypto finds that afternoon. So you can do light sniper circle and you can do three payments even if you're uh, lower so we're there for you and you can come on board and if you can't even do that you can do a non-farm payroll not far away there you get the whole friday which is the crypto fines and three hours uh, that's 197 you buy two and you get three months worth and you can access the recordings just something for you to think about anyway forget the products so we're talking about this whole trade war and the tech war and the hacking war and the everything war uh, and well, I've also went public with you and I said the big tra biggest trade of the year will be the Bitcoin 2019 um, versus Korean one. And the FX equivalent is the USD versus the Korean uh, one. I would ideally like the JPY versus the Korean one. But try find a broker who's going to do that one for you. It's difficult enough getting the USD Korean one. On that note of brokers, a lot of you ask me all the time. OK, I use two brokers. The one that you will see in the links below here on the sheet is one that is of Europe, but outside the EU margin loans uh, area. You can get up to 100x instead of the whatever you're restricted to in the EU, the 5x um, in there. It's Scandinavian capital markets, Swedish, very noble, safe. Volvo, think the Volvo of it, but you can trade FX, FX, and you get silver and gold as well. It's not all equities. You won't be able to do uh, Apple and all of that stuff, but you'll get 100x on that. If you're doing your saving for gold, how's that turning out? Guys, keep accumulating this. This is such a beginning of such a huge, huge move. We are wait. The money is going to be made when gold and silver go absolutely mental, parabolic, out of control close to a crypto. And that's still a long way off and just to come. For those of you who think you're missing it, let me just say to you, that moment is still coming. Bullion Vault, cheaper than Maloney and Shift, accumulate in the link below. Go and do it. I'm telling you this because I give this to my children and anyone I know, my best friends to do. People who aren't traders, who just want to be investors. Go and accumulate $50 a month and buy yourself some silver in Singapore. You can have it housed in Singapore, Toronto, London, Munich, Paris. Everybody talk about mm, pop music. Oh, hold on. I got distracted there. Those cities are not actually all available. London, Singapore, New York, and uh, Switzerland. I just go Singapore. Uh, I trust Singapore more than I trust any of the others. And you can get your named bar and, and it's with your username on it. Buy a serial number once you've bought a certain amount of silver. And you can go get, collect it and fetch it or have it delivered. Those all have a uh, small amount of fees in it, but it's 100% allocated. It is not an ETF with all the fake legals or cash equivalent after it's mooned and we've locked down all the, and that's what could happen, guys. This is going to get ugly, ugly. We don't do small resets anymore. This is going to get hugely ugly. And I've got another big thing to tell you that's really critical and why I'm going live now, now, now for, uh, and I'm telling to my community every day, my community hears from me on looms once a day, minimum, sometimes three or four times a day. We're updating on equities. We're going on there all the time. This is going to be one of the most critical times. And I'm telling you now as well, uh, absolutely for free. Everybody has been on holiday during August. And all the big market moves start to shift September. What's the date today, Francis? Checks computer, 26.8. Some, I, I got mini famous on a number of boards calling gold for 1300 when it had never done that 
before. And I said, 2nd September is the day. I started the thread saying, 2nd September is the day. We had our classic setup with a macro setup, with a priming setup that we all teach you. You get education in our community um, as well. And I hate that word, education. Educate. Who wants to get educated? That's what schools tended to do. I talk about community-based learning from both myself on regular interaction and the others around you, and you will be a teacher as part of that in time as your skills develop. That's just what I like, community-based learning that skills you up to exploit and get to a level of training where you can approach my level of experience and impl implementation of technical analysis. Not that I'm a god, um, but I can tell you I've come a massive long way, and the charts make a whole bunch more sense to me genuinely. And when they don't, I know to stay out. Anyway, um, so the big break period is coming. September and October is a very dicey period when there's dicey times. Uh, sometimes they can be very strong periods for the market, but if you are where we are now, my suspicion is big moves will be uh, taking place in the future. Let's get that perfectly aligned. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I wanted to get just the gray screen, um, perfectionist in me. So what are you guys are saying? I've got so much more to say, uh, but let me just see that. Is there an inverse head and shoulders on DXY? It says Chico Loco, Chico Loco. Man, you must have been in Greece. Uh, I can remember. There must have been a character called Chico Loco who was with John Travolta, a swiveling the pelvis and all of that. Um, is there an inverse head and shoulders? I will have a look for you now and I will answer. Um, please stop promotion. We know it already. Okay. Well, all right. All right. All right. I'll just talk for free then for hours, give you all my best information and I won't be allowed to do stuff all about it. Okay. I'm sorry. Anyway. So the key thing about going back to that is who's it, who's the, what's the going on? So Japan versus US. There's a Japan versus US, they're cuddling up real close and tight. Trade wars, cuddling and all of that. Why? Because China is asserting, they're building islands, turning them into military bases, kind of like what the US does in the Marshall Islands, Guam, Porto del Ruz, all of these. If you have a look at the larger US empire, apart from the, you know, the big kidney bean that sits between Mexico and Canada, you suddenly realize that they are freaking everywhere. Yep. So China's doing a little taste of that and that's breaking the rules because we're the only ones to do that. Uh, anyway, so with that South China Sea and all of that trade bottleneck, I think they say about 30% of all uh, world GDP travels through a couple of those island straits, um, all going down. Hello, Double Dragon, how are you? Uh, Istanbul, nice, he's in Istanbul, Chico Loco. Um, anyway, so what's happening is with all of that, um, there's a bit of heating up of the tension. Now, Japan kind of got disarmed after World War II. Somebody dropped an atom bomb. You know that nuke thing? The, the good guys that were the first to do napalm, the first to do chemical weapons um, in Vietnam and the first to do nuclear weapons, you know, those good pacifist guys. Oh, hang on. It was us. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, the West, AK, USA, um, Agent Orange, that's right, Napalm, all the, all the most friendly stuff um, with Henry Kissinger going like this. What can we do now? Can we fry them? Can we fry them? What about a flamethrower with acid? Um, yep, yep, yep. It was all going down. Anyway, so uh, I digress a little bit there. So Japan is cozying up to America because they need to form alliances. And Japan simultaneously is decoupling from South Korea. So recently lost most favored status. Japan has de-ranked South Korea. No longer safe to trade in strategically significant commodities. Um, decoupled from their intelligence services. We don't, our intelligent dark states and the murders they like to perpetuate are no longer going to be shared with you and who we think are bad people in your plot of the world and you're not going to share with us. This is the beginning of a separation, a choosing of sides. Uh, South Korea sits essentially as an outpost of China. It's a simplification to say that. But geographically and geopolitically um, uh, and certainly economically, you need to view it like that. South Korea is kind of a capitalist uh, wing of the China state. And I have lots of Koreans, they're very different people to Chinese and they're very different people to Japanese. And there's lots of... Um, uh, history, some of it pretty dark between all three of them in triangulation. So I'm not, I'm giving this for 
the dumb Westerner round eyed blokes that just don't understand that it's just all East that, you know, there's stuff that's uh, some history there, but in a simplified sense, uh, Korea is going to get hurt when the one gets hurt. Uh, the Hong Kong dollar fails. The one is going to fail and the one is uh, Western and it's uh, got a terrible trade deficit to Japan. A terrible trade deficit, uh, deficit, 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 deficit to Japan, which means they buy more of the Japanese stuff uh, and they sell insufficient amounts to the Japanese. So these are all very, very problematic, very problematic elements um, for the overall dynamic. So there's a it's kind of like there's a football match going down and the red shirts are choosing all the red shirts and the blues and you're all choosing your team and the five-a-side match is going to kick off. But instead of kicking a, a pig's bladder into a net, um, you're going to end up uh, having an economic and a technological warfare and financial warfare. And this is where the currencies come in, which is behind our, even the yen gaining strength against the dollar as well, but particularly against this other Southeast Asian. So this is a Southeast Asian. Asian crisis that we're calling for, a Southeast Asian uh, crisis where certain things um, will go down in a value in terms of the local domestic currency, certain more, more so in the dollar hegemony uh, currency. And I think there will be an element of um, the milkshake theory for both the dollar and to a lesser extent the yen, but the yen will just be dollar plus. Um, because it's well contained. So let's see what you're saying. Um, hi from Bulgaria. Hello to you, Yabor. James Fraley, thanks for what you do. Absolute pleasure. Appreciate you appreciating me. Um, also hi from the UK, Dave. Yes, good man. Um, I hope all well there. Heard you're getting a bit of proper summer again after some rain. Hi from Malaysia. Selvi, nice to have you. Speed Freak, is Japan favoring Russia in the same manner as China? So Russia is um, closer to China than it would be to uh, the US, certainly, where there is quite an adversarial tendency. So Russia is recognizing that they have big borders and they need a, re a fairly good uh, relationship with China. And Russia's specifically energy, very energy dominant economy, and China's quite a big energy consumer. So they're actually getting on okay. That's not to say they haven't had um, bits of ground they've argued, they haven't argued over before. Um, but I think Putin is playing a pretty, a, 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 a cooperative game um, with China and is doing certainly much less of um, the agitating and the antagonist that Trump is doing right now. I look the same. I look like Mr. Clean, all-purpose cleaner. Thanks for the live stream, says Gangster Grievous. If you were to recommend a book that helped you the most uh, or taught you the best lessons for trading, what do you think it would be? I have a whole bookshelf here. And you know what? I feel real bad about this. I've been saying, ah, one of these days I'm going to tell you all about the books I read. And I've got like a concentrated one that moves with me. It sort of comes with me. And then I've got like books strewn left in vaults. Uh, in holes in the ground um, that just can't carry with me because there's too much and people that are like looking after them um, for me. So there's a lot of uh, books, but um, I'll do, I must, must, must do that YouTube where I'll do it uh, free thing. And this thing is like lighting and I kind of have to hold my camera and walk around. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll rack and stack them. So I still owe you that one and I'll take it as a note to do it. There is no one uh, book um, there's, um, there's, you know, uh, there, there's a few, there's quite a few I value, uh, reading and I would certainly say there's a few that you'll get value out of reading. Um, so I'll, I'll give you, if you want a top 20 maybe, um, and that'll go some way to answering the, the question. Um, do the HVF course. Don't bother with books says the dent. Um, hi from Wales. Good man on you. Proper rugby playing Martin spelt with a Y in that's how, that's how good solid Welshman right there. Um, nice, mate. And good for your team. They're looking really good for World Cup going into 2019. Uh, yes, 19. And then, of course, there's the Lions Tour to South Africa, and Martin. Um, you could don red and go out and uh, chase uh, the guys in South Africa. You might enjoy that. Uh, it's, it's always a good crack. Um, anyway, so what have I got to tell you about the geopolitics and uh, the other things? So there is an intelligence war, and the fact that China will have its own android means a splitting of the world in terms of intelligence lines. What you might find is that Russia prefers harmony for its people or develops its own, uh, and there's a splitting. Uh, 
kind of east versus west for the gateway platforms. It wouldn't surprise me. And as they've taken the lead in 5G, you underestimate their smarts and their commitment once they decide they're going to do something. These guys play the long game. You should see how they're playing it in Africa, weaseling their way in slowly, very low profile, digging in real deep, putting plenty of citizens over there. Patience wins the long game, the multi-generational game. And no one does that better than China that talks of multiple generations. Um, anyway, so the only thing that's with this new tete-on-tete -tete between uh, Japan and America where this friendliness has broken out, a complete bout of love and friendliness broke out like a brawl, lots of cuddles, um, and the reason this is happening, one problem, however, the auto tariffs on Japan are not being dropped. Um, why do you think that might be? Well, Mr. Trump has a problem. He wants to protect U.S. car makers, um, my American friends, don't take this personally, but relatively, the rest of the world's cars probably a little bit better than yours. Um, anyway, and there's a lot of a pension scheme uh, attached to just about every American car made, thanks to the union teamsters. Uh, so sometimes the car makers start off, they're already three grand in a hole. That's how much they've got to put into the pension scheme, and they're underfunding it, and they're going to go bust, and they just about all went bust last time. Um, and I want to tell you this. Of the, uh, and the one thing I agree with Real Vision, there's a few, and you should follow their channel. It's a good channel, Real Vision, Raul throwing out good stuff um, generally, and broadly, we're quite aligned. Um, we were on calling this recession a little before him, but he's really putting out lots of recession stuff now. Um, we said 33 months from the first interest rate hike, which was December 2015, which was October. Uh, 18 that we would have our first, we said it in July of last year, we'd have our first real crack um, of problems. The market fell in that very month. Um, and then the Fed, we said, we was going to do a U-turn. They did a U-turn. Um, so we're pretty riding the same horse. Follow Real Vision um, worthwhile. Anyway, he highlighted a very interesting bit of stats, and I'm going to lean on them in case you haven't had the time to watch. One of them was Corporate debt is an absolute bun fight. In our last non-farm, we put a number of guys into HYG. Uh, this is what we're trading. I've still got it on short. I think it's going to more than halve. Um, and it is high yield debt. That is corporations that are having to pay high amounts. This is junk bond territory. Now, the point that Raoul makes very wisely uh, and very well with great slides and really slick production, you've got to tip your hat to the back office he's got and the commitment he's made to broadcasting um, a real honest take in the financial world. And I respect that uh, out of what he's done um, is that corporate debt, Totally agree. Absolute bomb blowout. There's 15%. This, this this doesn't come from him. This comes from other stats that I've got. But 15% of them are borrowing to pay their dividends. Borrow to pay dividends. That means your loan keeps getting better. Never mind the loan buybacks of buying your own stock so that you hit your options. And now you put debt on every corporation's balance sheet. This is a control structure game. They all have to participate. They're all doing it. And the Zionists know it. And they're going to become the owners of every corporation when they do the debt trick. Just like subprime for houses, now you get subprime for corporations. Same game, same trick different asset class, plus your subprime for cars and your subprime for students. You've now subprimed everything. It's the same trick, the financialization of everything. Lend, 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 the Goldman Sachs crowd. Uh, I can't help. Uh, this provokes my autism and my dyslexia immensely. Um, you had uh, Mnuchin, um, Stephen Mnuchin, Trump saying, no, 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 he's not having second thoughts after Trump said he had second thoughts and then decided he had second thoughts about his second thoughts. Uh, Steve Mnuchin, um, do a little quick Google to see if he's Zionist or not. Very clearly uh, Zionist. Um, dad, Goldman Sachs uh, guy, all of that. Um, right on the inside there with Trumpity, Trump, Trump, Dump. Uh, the financialization of everything, the corporations are now all borrowing to buy their own stock. They're taking equity out, which can devalue and lose value. Debt has a higher priority than equity holders. Banks then own the corporation more. They can demand boards on the seats. If the banks are failing and they're owned by government, government runs the corporation through the banks. Can you not see this? 
Can you not see the subprime game on housing? They nuked uh, the retail household Omer, who's been flat on his backside. The one thing that I differ slightly on, on from Real Vision is this never was a recovery. It was a complete depression, 2007 and 2008. In fact, the UK had two years virtually of negative and they pulled a 0 0.1 on one quarter so that they didn't have two years in full of negative growth rate following the subprime crisis. And the definition, everyone knows the definition of a recession. Well, of course, that's two quarters of negative growth. We're already in the recession. By the time you get the stats, it's three months late. By the time you've had three months and another three months set three months late, you realize that the recession's already started. You're in it now, guys, um, if you're calling it a recession. Um, but the key, the key thing is we already qualified for a major depression in 07, 08 that we never dealt with the primary issues and we've just been grinding along the bottom and all these bigger numbers and these high stock markets have all been generated by an massive explosion, particularly in corporate debt, a degree of reflation of the housing market, a full-blown subprime cars bubble, a full-blown student bubble. So they are now doing the subprime trick after getting retail homeowners uh, and boomers all chasing uh, Miami apartments and flipping apartments, they got that generation. They now got the millennials with the, the student debt. Can't be written off even with bankruptcy. Ha! Talk about that. They're closing all the loopholes. They will own your ass. Um, and then they're going to own your car. They're going to take it back. It's going to be worth one third. I am such a bear on cars. So his auto tariffs, this is what triggered me to this long uh, story. I wanted to say, um, I keep wanting to call Steve Mnuchin Munchkin. Um, this is the autistic dyslexic in me. So Stephen Munchkin, um, the Zio uh, kid uh, who is from Goldman Sachs, uh, is helping and ensuring that Donald Trump prevails and that credit is made freely available. And these five corporations that I started to tell you because it was getting to cars, of which Ford Motors, General Motors are two of the biggest, all from the same industry. Those are motor industry uh, corporate borrowers. AT&T, you're asking who the other three are. I can hear you asking. Francis, Francis, give me all the information. Who the other three of the absolutely most bombed out with corporate debt mega monsters? Number one weighing in um, and pop out to watch uh, Real Vision. Um, you'll get the slides and all the beautiful slick stuff. I'm giving you the quick bullet run by AT&T, 178 billion dollars. So that's a million. Then a thousand of those millions, a thousand of the millions. And now you've got that one unit group, 178 unit groups of those thousands of one millions. Yeah? Yeah. You think that's not a big number? For one corporation, it's a freaking huge number. Anyway, uh, I hope that rings home. So that ends well, surely. Um, anyway, so 178 billion. And they're all supposedly still rated not yet uh, junk debt. And this is one of the things that Raul uh, makes very clear in his videos, is that if the rating agencies were doing their job, in my opinion, and this is where I differ slightly from him, again, they won't do their job. They should all be made junk. And what happens then, the point he makes, is pension um, investors can no longer hold junk bonds. They can't hold junk bonds. So that means they can no ho longer hold that corporation's debt. So I told you AT&T. Who were the other two, apart from the two cars that are the only ones from the same industry? Dell Computers, yep, remember how, what a star they once were? They've done some nasty <sniffs> snorting the line of debt and getting real giddy high. And then there are the final one, yep, my favorite, General Electric, Mr. Jack Wells, biggest corporation by market cap, the great legendary CEO, fraudulent as absolutely can be, fake numbers, terrible disclosure, um, and uh, the gentleman who called out and found out Bernie Madoff for cheating is all over them. Have a watch for his um, uh, videos. I think it's Mark Katsapoulos. 
I know you're going to be able to find that after my excellent explanation of his Greek surname. Um, but nonetheless, just search on General Electric Fraud and you'll find him anyway. And then you'll tell me how to spell his surname. Um, he uh, is all over them like a dirty... Uh, uh, <laughs> Like leprosy. Let's just leave it there. Um, anyway, let's check in with your comments because I've got more to tell you, but I don't want to leave you behind. That was a long monologue. Francis, did you see the export data of South Korea? Exports to China, which is South Korea's number one client, representing about 25% of total, fell 20% year on year. Murat, you're a legend. You've brought a data point of interest. Yes. So what happens is China can't buy anymore because they're being throttled by America. South Korea can't export to them near as much anymore. Japan don't want to play or dance with South Korea anymore or take their products, starting to push them in the China box. Um, and you're going to get a westernized currency badly, badly beaten, and that will have an absolute uh, hardening plus with a moon spike in my uh, view. Um, what else have we got here? Don't bother with books. Do the course. If you like my mullet style, I can make an all-natural wig for you. Um, yes, thank you. I know the Turks are very big on that. Every time I go to Turkey, there's all the guys with the bleeding out of their pores. I like being smooth. Low maintenance now. It's grown on me. Just kick the can down the street, says Ghost. Um, Gangster Grievous, I hate cars too. I'm 21 and I don't drive one. I actually like driving. Um, I just hate the car industry from an investment perspective, over capacity, uh, over financialized, thanks to the Goldman Sachs, particularly America, seven year deals. I've covered this before. I won't rehash. Um, you've got Asperger's. You have my empathy. You have my empathy. Um, keep being awesome and keep going forward. Great job, Francis. Always giving away great stuff. Eight plus. Thank you, Kevin. That's very kind. Sophie, have you spoken about the up and coming trade deal between Japan? Yes. So we were talking about that, Sophie. And we were talking about how autos were being left out. Uh, and the real reason is you've got two very, very dead companies with massive amounts of debt that sell less attractive cars in America called Ford and GM. Um, and they need to keep all the competition to a minimum or at least make it more expensive for them to play. Um, but otherwise, lots of want to do a deal with Japan. Friendship, business, they'll probably be selling arms and Japan will be arming up like no uh, time uh, never no time before, probably all on um, American-based arms. Um, so that's a guess. It's not a fact. It's a guess on my behalf. And the intelligence sharing goes on. And the banks that are up to the elbows. So I mentioned WFC, Wells Fargo Corporation. It is a short. It's still a short. I love it as a short. I'm expecting and more than halvening there as well. And they are up to their eyeballs in both student and auto debt. So my, pu my beautiful sweet spot of hating financial companies, again, Rouse, my second brother from another mother, um, he was all over uh, banks. We've been calling Deutsche Bank for the last five years. I've stopped doing it because everybody's got into it now and almost owns it, and it feels like a long one. And it wasn't just Deutsche. Of course, it was commerce. We were all over the subprime. Many people were not trying to be clever. Lots of people realize the entire Euro banking um, cartel is absolutely destroyed. And uh, unfortunately, the American ones are, are a bit worse off than you realize. Um, the what else have we got francis both tlt and gold look a bit toppy your thoughts could gold have a little bit of a pullback says kevin so uh the key thing is not until silver's done 18 dollars for me it could pull back before it does its 18 dollars but i've got a very good structure that i feel fairly confident that we will go through 18.03 on silver um so i'm expecting that one to play out it could be that gold lags and the xau XAG ratio shifts as well, which is a good thing for the gold run. Remember, we're still up in, let me give you the latest and greatest, turns to give you profile view so you can take in all those scars where I had my brain uh, rebooted and reset. They, put, they took the chimp one that I was given and gave me the one of Stephen Hawkins after he checked out. Um, let's just have a look there. So I'm on the XAU, XAG, 86.45. That is 86.4. It's extremely high. It's extremely high. It's not the 93 and a half that it was, but it is extremely high. Just to give you perspective, it traded in the last crash, which is going to be the junior brother, the smaller, the six foot one brother to the eight foot nine Frankenstein brother that's coming of crashes. Um, it was a big one. 
it, it qualified to play uh, schoolboys rugby in Craven Week, South Africa uh, at six foot one. And that wasn't even as a lock forward. He wasn't tall enough. He was a flanker. But the Frankenstein at eight foot uh, five inches tall is still to come. And on the six foot one, uh, younger, shorter brother, we went to 30 uh, on this ratio. I think we can moon shoot uh, on the metals to a bigger degree than we did last time. This, there isn't normal recessions. Everyone's going like, oh, we could have a bit of a recession and all of that. What? It's kind of like, guys, it's kind of like driving in a car with five knives half a millimeter away from various critical organs of your body, the lung puncture, the heart puncture, um, the gun with a hairline figure trigger and a piece of gut tied to the door handle, um, Michael, glycerine, um, dynamite that blows up on impact and you're doing 400 kilometers per hour on an autobahn that has a concrete wall at the end and no brakes. How do you have a minor little bumper bashing of an accident? <laughs> I'm sorry, the days of minor little bumper bashing accidents are not going to happen in this scenario. You do not have that many things that are totally about to terminate you that cannot, that cannot have small accidents all go off at the same time and expect a small accident. There is more dynamite packed in that car. Um, there is more reasons. There's more flamethrowers. It's all going up. It's nuclear. Um, there isn't a small recession. How do you have a small recession? What are they going to do? They're going to do what they did last time. We have tools. We have many tools, they will tell you. And they'll get out. They'll open the toolbox and it'll be some breadcrumbs from somebody's lunch left in the bottom and a bit of crunched up plastic. And there'll be one shifting spanner, which you adjust like this. The pro proverbial and on it, it'll have con like this keyboard. Control P right there. Whoops, the camera moved. What am I doing? I'm absolutely balmy there. Pulled the cord and the camera moved. Nutter. Absolute nutter. Yeah, that's what they've got on that tool, at the bottom of their toolbox. Control P. Control P. Control P. The shifting spanner for all occasions. <laughs> even even foreplay with the missus. He, he rocks up in the bedroom with his shifting spanner. The tool of all tools. We have many tools. It comes in many colors, but it's still a freaking shifting spanner. And it's the Control P. Shifting spanner. It's that's all it is. You can play with fractional reserve. You can buy the bonds. You can buy the stock market. You can you can do whatever you like. Create more tokens in your fake monetary system and buy up beach pro side properties for all you care and corporations, bonds, and their equities and everything. But it's still the same freaking tool. Oh God. Yeah. You think we can go below 30 in the gold to silver ratio? Asks a number. One stroke, 1024 with the MPC meme. I like it. Anonymous. Keep it that way. Stay under the radar, my friend. Yes, we can. In my in one, I do think we can. Hi from Paris. God bless the French. Go on, you yellow vests. Turn that city upside down. The government is the enemy. Your government is the enemy. Great watching all the safety trades. Yes. Francis. No way the man, the myth, the legend. Um, debt Jubilee. So this is my problem. This is my problem with some of Raoul's trades. Buy the bonds. He's right. He'll be right for a while. It'll go up. The rates will go down. The bonds will go up. Everything will be hunky-dory. You're buying debt. Everything goes into debt. You buy the government debt because all the other debt is going to die. Guess what? It's kind of like hiding out in the safest room in the bomb shelter when they're coming with those missiles that do a little bit of mining. Um, it, you know, debt isn't the place. Debt isn't the place if we have the full-blown reset, which involves a jubilee. If they do a jubilee, one man's debt, problem removed, is another man's investment zeroized. Let's say that again. My investment was your debt. Your debt disappears. My investment disappears. That's a whole bunch of money going poof. And those little T entry, those little T accounts in the accounting system, boom. Gone. Okay. Well, that's deflationary, old friend, because losing all your investments, those boomers aren't going to like their pension schemes very much anymore. No, sirree. Monster boxes are the answer, Richard. Or 
monster boxes of silver and gold under your bed or, or hole in ground somewhere near your previously buried dog or anything else that no one would want to dig up. What would you recommend on protecting savings in the up and coming recession? Dobromir Petrov. I like a good Eastern European man name. And they don't come any better than Dobromir Petrov. I love it. I want to just roll my R's and drink a vodka with you, my friend. Um, so, yes, uh, like we said, physical gold, silver, and uh, bullion. And keep it yourself is definitely one. And then trading, I, I keep saying it to my guys, you've got to have a little bit of physical because, because what will happen, the counterparty risk even on brokers um, this is bugging me a bit. Sorry. The counterparty risk, even on brokers, is high. You can make profits and they could take your money away. They could say, You're a nasty capitalist uh, pig. Though we're resetting right now and you seem to have benefited out of everybody else's misery. We are levering a special tax that actually sees 100% uh, of your holdings being withheld uh, until further notice. You may submit a claim and buy a token on our new blockchain. Um, item, which is your new currency, uh, and lodge that claim and fill in the following form, 510239, um, uh, submit your identity, prove that you paid all your tax, tax for the last 10 years, um, and then join a line in the queue, bring your passport identity document, make sure we can always track you, confirm that you're using an Android phone so that we can surveil you and we have your face recognition. Did you renew your passport by any way? Maybe we can return your money in a debt instrument over 10 years paid at 0% interest to you over the various period. How do you feel about that? sign here. How about that? Pretty shit, I would say. So be careful. Um, anyway, Theresa May must have been one of those tools. Yes, indeed. Although I, I, she did make me kind of horny when she danced. I have to say, there was something a little bit like, yeah, baby. <laughs> I took a look at my missus and said, you know, if you didn't play your cards right, I'd bag the granny. I'd make a shuffle. It would just get me right on up. Anyway, um, Ghost, till it's not. Afro Archer, can the HVF tool be used on different platforms? MT4 only for now. We have an MT5 version. It is available to all our community members who open the Scandinavian capital markets. It does all your calculations of your trade targets to as many decimal places as you care with a stop loss. And it works out your RRR. It prints it and shows it all on the screen for you. It allows you to adjust it. It is beautiful. It is a thing of great beauty, although it has its clunky moments. Um, do you follow Ray Dalio? What do you think of his take on China potentially becoming the next global power? Ooh, I don't know if that's particularly controversial or it's even that accurate. It's a well-suggested uh, one, Matthew. Hi, Lou. Um, so, Ray Dalio. Ray seems to me like a guy who's got really high on the hog of being part of the banking cartel and is having moments of conscience and is establishing alibi. This is what I mean by establish, establishing alibi. In fact, many of the IMF and the BIS, that's the Bank of International Settlements for you, um, like to establish alibi. I want to go on record. It's unsustainable, these debt levels. I have concerns. We've called meetings. I've raised it. There's a memo with my name on it somewhere that I signed that said, you know, this can't carry on. There you go. Sign here. I've done my bit. Now let's make money out of the sheeple. And when it blows up, Hey, I always said, I always said, you can't do that. It's not going to carry on forever, you know. Don't look at me. I raised the alarm real quiet. I went, ding a ling ling ding a ling ling Hey, guys, this is a shit scheme. But anyway, we're making money for now. So let's carry on. <laughs> That's how it goes. Um, Lamont Blanc, Dalio is a schmuck like you. Well, I don't know him well enough to know if he's a schmuck. So I can't say if he's a schmuck like me. Um, I'm maybe a different kind of schmuck. What do you say to that? Anyway, thanks for popping in for this little love fest. Um, why not go on YouTube channels where you actually like the people you're watching? <laughs> anyway, just a thought. It's a dumb thought, but it's a thought. Um, hi there. Love your show. How much power does the Society of Jesus, a.k.a. Trump, have? I've got to read that one again. I send spirituality and God entering into the same sentence as the word Trump. I need to concentrate. This was a big challenge for me. 
Um, I, there's a dichotomy seesaw that's going in my mind. I'm going, whoa. So let's read it again. Hi there. Yes, hi there to you, Davis. Love your show. Is it a show? Great. I'm glad it's a show. I aim to entertain. Um, how much power, how much power does the society of Jesus? Is that the church? Is it a special sock? Uh, AKA Trump have. Mm, I'm still a bit confused, I'm afraid. On the second reading, I'm still not too sure. Um, finally convinced, Jeremy Koberstein, finally convinced my baby boomer dad to sell bank stocks he bought in 2010. Smart move, smart move, Jeremy. Even if you had the best banks, they all tied together. It's an all fall down, ring a ring of roses. Together we gain strength until we all lepers and all fraught and stuffed. And the one guy that remains healthy, for now, gets dragged down with us all. By showing him indexes of Euro and Japan's banks after 10 years of 0% rates. Yet, zero or low rates are killer for banks. They don't have margin. Apart from on your credit card. Those five corporations that are all guaranteed on the verge of bust, whose debt are, should be downgraded, if the freaking rating agencies pulled their finger out of their backside and stopped being Zio pigs and supporting this control structure of farce and actually downgraded them, they would precipitate the crash if they really, really acknowledged the degree of indebtedness. Some of them have 200% plus uh, debt to equity ratios. If they truly turned them into the junk that they are, they're 178. But, so junk bond markets is like, it's like paying um, poker at the five cents table. It's a certain kind of guy. And then you have the real corporate bonds market where the high rollers uh, all get their room free and their drinks free and they sit in a nice environment with waiters. And then there's like out the back, the kitchen, the kitchen staff sitting on wood crates having the five cents game. You don't move 178 billion of debt that deserves to be junk out of the high rollers table and stick it in the back with uh, the guys playing five cents and matchsticks on that poker table. There's no way it gets absorbed. <laughs> You've got a bunch of guys with uh, $10 bills and $5 bills and $1 bills playing and you came from uh, a table where there were 100,000 chips and that just doesn't get absorbed. By the way, you drop that into junk bond, the junk bond market just about Monty quadruple megathons and there's no one to buy it. <laughs> Because not that many people do junk. Once you're at that level, it's a different level of game. It's a low-level game. It's a rough patch. So if they were doing their job, we would have a complete, a complete debt, debt, major debt crash, and it's going to come anyway, but they would enforce it now, and they'd bring it to a head. But they're not allowed to. You see, it's kind of like uh, the Acosta guy who was uh, who did the deal for Epstein. Um, the people involved were above his station. It's not your station to call the reset. Henry Kissinger sits there and says, I will, while he's stroking his Bond pussycat on his lap, I will, for the Ashkenazi Kaiser, do the financial reset over here, and I will push the button when I do it. And it go like this, and it go only when I go. Nobody else move, you hear? That's how it goes. He sits there on his 1980s BlackBerry typing up Trump's next tweet. That's how it goes. Is it time to sell real estate, says Davis? Is it time to sell real estate? Um, there will be a good time to buy real estate coming in the not too decent, uh, not too far out future. Um, and yes, unfortunately, that will be uh, a bad market for real estate, particularly in the US, as it's been reinflated. And what will end up happening is it's going to get deflated again because so many people are leveraged too high. And what you get is the forced seller. No one's going to want to sell. Everyone's going to hang on. No one wants to become a tenant again, like in subprime, because they've seen this movie before and they're saying, damn, I'm not getting caught again, am I? And it's like Pavlovian slap on the back of the head. Yes, you are. You fell for the Zio trick again, Ursary extracting. The game is we put you on the wrong side of a compound interest equation and we can spike those rates now that you lever to the hilt. And that's how they do it. And that's how they're going to get him. And you become a forced seller. When you become a forced seller, 
there will be hedge funds with ex-Goldman Sachs bankers that are running them that will be picking up for pennies on the pound your property and renting them back to you for an incredible yield for them. And you will become a tenant in your own home and the government will uh, have investment in those people. And those people will um, do rotational board and government positions. And you will see, haven't I seen this all happen before? And this is your financial terrorism that you are subjected to by this Ursary machine. Roku shop. Someone's trying to punt his uh, goods. I don't know. Roku and shop. What is that? What are you trying to sell, bud? My 401k is feeling the hot, the heat. Thought about taking my losses and stabilizing the rest. Buy gold stocks and silver stocks uh, would be what I would do. Skilled bad habits. I'm also pretty skilled at some bad habits. Um, isn't it the control structure's best interest to keep the game of musical chairs going on? Now, what they want to do is they want to hold all the assets and throw you out, Matthew. They want you to literally be owned. Everything you pay, everything monthly, you be owned. Monthly payments for cars are coming. You'll be paying in crypto, micro payments for using your aircon that won't belong to you in your own car. I've spoken about this before. Already doing it. You pay monthly for a certain extras. They want annuity. They want to love you. This is how you win. Rental extraction and ursary extraction. This is the game. This is the game that they rail on. And that's what you need to learn. And you need to take that power away from them by having zero debt, having no rental extraction, minimizing how much they extract from you on taxes. Do not feed their horrific and horrible machine. Be mobile. Be a man of the ether. That is wise. Um, what do you think about silver dividend stocks in recession, depression as a hedge? It will, could be choppy, Rebecca. Um, nice to have the ladies on here. And uh, please enjoy the metaphors, whether male or female, for what they're worth. Um, what do I think about silver dividend stocks in recession or depression as a hedge? So overall, the underlying commodity is performing well. And it's, in my view, um, because it's bullion nature and its potential monetary value, uh, undervalued immensely. You can't print silver. You can't print gold. I know you know that. I'm just reminding you. Um, and uh, silver miners have been very heavily hit. Watch, however, the degree of indebtedness. Remember the financial instruction the corporations have been put under. Many of these silver miners have not been making money and have been loading up on balance sheet just to stay in business until this moment comes. So it's better to be initially in the metal until the metals move so much that the stocks move later um, because they've done some dirty in the meantime. That's my take. And that's a general rule, Rebecca. Um, it's not a fact. There'll be some, uh, there's been, I wanted to do a YouTube called The One Gold Company. It's fascinating, the history of Barrick. Go and check. The ex-CEO uh, of Barrick was involved in 9-11 um, and all sorts of things. I wanted to do a story about Roger Kebble, the assisted suicide of Kebble of Rangold in South Africa. And uh, Rangold was assumed um, as well as one of the many uh, buying up. So the shakeout on the precious metals industry is just like the Rockefeller oil game. Hold it down so goddamn low. Buy them up for pennies in the pound and then own the real money, the gold and the silver in the ground. That even rhymes. There's something to be said for my dyslexia. Um, and anyway, so you do that. You do that. And that's the game. It's the Rockefeller game. And there's the one gold company to me, just like SAB uh, merging with Anheuser-Busch. That was the breweries is now the one beer company. These guys have just about 90% of the biggest volume of beer produced in the entire world. And it was part of the Anglo-American crowd in South Africa. And of course, it was Anasha Bush in America. And the one accumulated all the emerging, including China, Poland, and the American owned American market and a couple of high profile um, European brands. And they've merged that whole thing. It is your one world order of beers. And there is, to a degree, a one world order of mines going on. It's already so strongly calculated. And there's some shady characters with some interesting history. Go and search the legacy hero. His name escapes me. I'm terrible with names. 
um, of Barrick. That is, I don't think he's the CEO anymore. And do a 9-11, the gold, the whole thing, search on him. Um, it's a fascinating. And the Bush family, they all tie up. I was like shocked by all that. It sounds a little bit tinfoil hat. Just trust me. It'll be really interesting. Anyway, great question, Rebecca. What's the best way to invest in gold? Is it safe to use an ETF? Don't use an ETF. I said it at the beginning. I'll say it again. Don't use an ETF. Use the Bullion Vault link. And I'm not saying it because it's in my link. If you don't want to use it, go find somebody else. Um, where they do not hypothecate, they have one-to-one, 100% -one, holdings, and that you can get a named registered bar, and you can buy it or claim it for yourself. So once you've got a certain amount of ounces that owes, uh, weighs up to X grams or ounces and the uh, standard bar set, go and grab it, um, or coins. Um, put it under your floorboard, no one will know. Yes, but if the fiat fails, then eventually they have a good chance. So yes, so that's part of the value. So Rebecca comes back at me with if debt is being devalued and also if they've got a very low rate with the rates due to go lower, the debts will be uh, come devalued money. They're going to print more of it, so they're going to devalue it. That's the only way they know, to, as I said, my one tool uh, policy. Um, so yes, uh, you will indeed be right. And that's why they will come at you and they'll have a great run, Rebecca. But there might just be a little delay. So this is a timing issue rather than a will it ever happen issue. Um, for me, we're both on the same page. It will happen. Um, particularly, all I'm saying is marginal minds will give you the biggest kicker, but they might be the slowest to realize to overcome their debt. So there might be a delay and then they moon. So if you're timing, Maybe grab some of the metal and then uh, flick into equities later. Um, try buying bread with a bar of gold. Uh, quite easy, actually. You can buy a bread factory, in fact, uh, an entire farm of uh, wheat and all of that. Those arguments don't hold water. Um, you melt it or break it off, some of them. No humbug. and No supermarket will take it. They will all be taking it. Trust me. You come to me, I'll take your silver and gold off you uh, and I'll give you most product, uh, any product that I do. Um, and those others will wake the hell up. There'll, there would be a black market if it's that bag. Uh, and there'll be tokens or um, a gold equivalents or e-golds or black, black market money. Um, with which is backed by gold and silver, if not the, the actual coin itself. Um, for gold, silver, and platinum purchases, yes, thank you. The market sniper team. I start reading my own links out. Where's that guy who says you sell too much? You sell too much. Hey, I'm sorry. Um, will security tokens on the next uh, on the blockchain start its course after the reset? Will security tokens on the blockchain start its course after the reset? So it's quite interesting. The reset. It's it, it's. I find it difficult. That's why I said the car analogy of 400 kilometers in an autobahn with a road just ending. There's that road in, it's, it's the, the Top Gear used it. It's in South Africa. So I'm sorry for the South African context, but it just ended. There was a guy in the apartheid area who owned the land below. They didn't secure all the land. Um, and then the road just ended and he refused to sell up. So that's to reroute the highway. So there's this amazing highway with this club and it just stops. It's coming to that end at a really high speed. There's no way you don't fly off and crash down below. Um, so I just don't see the reset not being a huge one, a huge real ball breaker of a reset. And if it's a huge ball breaker of uh, a reset, um, it's going to be a very different world for me to guess how we come out of it. But blockchain will be part of the solutions. You saw my YouTube video about Connie having that great idea with Pal. Hey. Hey, I just had an original thought. Let's do central banking blockchain token and replace the dollar. Yeah, good man. Good man. Francis, can you elaborate on the Great Reset? To me, that means a complete restructuring of the current monetary system. Matthew, absolutely. You've answered it. And what uh, form does that take? You have to use – it's a it's an imagination exercise. You have to scenario cast. You have to think about government um, tickets and everyone being given a this and a that and you, you need a unique number and it later becomes your tax number and it's tied to your passport and you can't get it until you go with your passport and then you can you know you can buy stuff and who knows it could be it could be ugly. I'd find a guy with no gold who has who has bread. I believe there is a higher elite that run this world. I'm a realist, although some would consider consider. I agree with you, Rebecca. Absolutely. Uh, I'm afraid um, it's disappointing, but it's humanity. 
Um, they all think we've got to dominate and be draconian dominate because if we don't do it, somebody else will do it. It's like the arms dealer's excuse. If we don't sell them the arms and make that profit, some other hood and crook will sell arms to these awful people. So we'll just be that hood and crook. Isn't that a nice logic to make ridiculous profit margins? We're doing it morally because we're kind of squeezing that other guy out. You know, we're taking it and we're less of a crook. You know, that's the arms dealer's excuse. Uh, and that's why they dominate. And then they seek higher levels of domination because they suddenly realize we understand we're being dominated and that makes us dangerous. So now they have fear and they're looking down all the time. So we better control them more because they might get out of hand and they know that we are, you know, messing with them. Uh, the Jesuits says tossing Molotovs. Okay, the Society of Jesus. Well, they were assassins originally. Um, that's why I laugh about everyone that is celebrating Guy Fawkes, which is actually a Spanish looking mask with the little beard trim, who was there to kill a king. I'm all for killing the monarchy, you know, generally. I'm good. Count me in. You know, how are we doing it? All that good stuff. Uh, that's kind of a joke. Uh, so don't report me for hate speech. But, you know, I'm also okay with that kind of joke. Grain of truth. Anyway, so but he, he was Spanish because he was sent from the Catholic Church to end the breakaway um, church uh, element. So we call him. This great rebel hero was trying to throw, overthrow a king. He was part of the assassins of Jesuits, the army of murderers for the church. Every control structure has its Mossad. Murderers, murderers, murderers. You're looking at me now and I'm calling you a murderer. Yeah, shame on you. Tel Aviv, organ transplant, capital of the world. If, you, if you've got a heart problem, you'll get a Chinese heart in no time there. Davis, Trump taking orders from Opus Day. Yes, there's all these crazy little sects. Anyway, let's talk about the markets, guys. Um, the other thing about uh, if silver goes to 18, a quick one for the crypto kids. Um, this is not the crypto channel, but I will mention it. Uh, BTC, USD. If we do get silver out of uh, to the eight, across the 18 line, it's possible that once again, Bitcoin will get a little bit of a run. Bitcoin looks heavy and looks like it needs to sell. But with gold holding up and being strong, it's hard for it to sell off because it's become a kind of risk-off asset, even though it's an exceedingly volatile one. It's a risk-off asset. What else have we got for you? So Cardinal, um, the shipping uh, looking sick as a, a canary. Uh, high yield HYG, um, getting nice and high again. It's getting into shorting territories in the range. HYG of 86 to 88. Um, looking forward to maybe buying a couple of puts on that one. I'm going to let it rally. Um, what else have we got? USD JPY. Did you see what happened on the USD JPY when everything wet the bed? Um, it actually ran the low of the big plunge of 2nd of January 2019. You may recall me saying October, September. October was the big uh, frighteners on the stock market while the Fed thought it was going to up its interest rates. Uh, they got a little bit of a feedback event. I think it was intentional. I think this is all drills. They're seeing how much, what volume, um, how far it falls. They're probably, you know, trying to manage a large amount of this. The notion that it's all random, um, I think there's a higher level of bot control uh, and investigative research in Goldman Sachs funds and all of these people, they all come out of Goldman Sachs and they go straight into advising presidents and saying, no, this is what he meant, explaining what the president meant. Our friend Munchkin, Steve Munchkin, you have to call him Munchkin from now on, only he's not cute like a Munchkin. He's kind of Zio. Um, but anyway, um, so there's a bit of a rally uh, on on the yen after probing that low. So I want to short it. I just don't want to short it here. I want to get back uh, into this a little higher up. I'd like to see it get a little bit of a rally. And that would also allow Bitcoin to fall off. I want to buy it cheaper again uh, around the 6,000s. I think that's all I've got for you, uh, gentlemen, um, all of you fine people. I'm going to start winding this down. I want to do a run through the comments. Uh, someone talking about guys and bread in a dystopia. I'll take crypto weapons over everything else. Yeah, it's never security. It, look after your security, uh, says Frey Frey. Um, I think some electronic money is good, but I also think internet down and power down money is also good. Um, XRP, they, uh, there's a lot of people thinking that Ripple will be the IMF coin after the little chinwaggies and politicians uh, and all of that. 
Um, some people think it will be XLM because on my Crypto Sniper logo, which has that economist of 2000 and was it 88 or 83, the coin, the new world currency type thing. It actually has the Roman numerals of XLM. So some people think it's Lumen. Lumen has very little of its coin released, by the way. So it's got a mega pre-mine, even bigger than XRP. So it does suit a profile in a sense. Um, what situation do you prefer to use lower leverage versus higher leverage? I genuinely, when I have high certainty and a very tight pinch, will use higher leverage and I'll go for a moon shoot. When I'm getting in early and that's one of many entries, I would use lower leverage. Um, help me, somebody begging there called Maria Magdalena, AB negative bloodline. Um, so I think that one can go. We'll just report her. Thanks, Maria, but begging's not so cool. Um, guys, don't come on here for that. Uh, thank you. What situation? How long till Silver gets to 21, Francis? Let me check my calendar. couple of full moons to go but it's not the 21 you should be asking about um it's what it does when it absolutely rockets that's where the money will be made so we talk about the five stages of a breakout you'll learn this when you come and there's a very affordable payments option not selling self-study program and you can get a sunday interaction with us and a non-farm payroll every month for as long as you're a member um, but in, in that, we talk about the five stages of a breakout and you initially get what we call, I'll tell you what they are, a break and feign back in or a feign through the key level that we've determined is a critical level and it feigns back in. In other words, it's not quite ready to run, but it's testing the line. Then you get a second chance where you get a, a real move through the level, but then it has a rest back. And then we get what we call either the capitulation, if it's downside or the melt up, the pump or the dump phase, that's where you make the bulk of your money. Um, we have interim levels and all sorts of things in our method. You'll learn about it. As I say, if you elect to learn about it, but the key element is the money is made in one key stage that repeats a couple of times. Um, and there's five stages, uh, and it's the third stage. Uh, and that's where, if you take the area where you have identified that stage and we do charts and we illustrate that, that's where the money's made. So it's not so much about getting through 21. I'm not particularly excited about what will, how much money I'll make on 21. I'm interested in, uh, it making a hundred or 75, you know, uh, running the previous high and some, the previous high was almost 50, 75 actually for, if we're to properly unwind this whole thing, we could go through a number of hundreds. You could see 500 silver. I'm not saying that it's not a prediction, but, uh, if all these trillions have to be a black hole into tangible assets, it's quite possible. Um, if we're talking dystopia, then you'd better have an AK-47 with bullets to defend your metal hoard. Yes, yes, there will be um, criminal elements. Tokens may get their traction through video games. Um, yes, interesting, Richard. Thunderbird, Davis, Trump taking orders from Opus Dei, Frey Frey in a dystopia. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, XRP is life. Batman RZ, how long till – that was your question. James Lilly, what's your average annual return in your trading account? It is broad. It is very broad. It is very broad. Um, we have individual trades where we take uh, deep into the six digits out um, when we have really big, big trade moves. So I almost talk about it, main major trade ideas. And the next one to that will be the USD Korean one. Do I actually uh, keep a 1st of January to uh, 31st of December uh, tally? Um, I actually have, um, it gets complex, you, you know, I have options accounts, spread betting accounts, uh, exchanges, a lot of things. So you also have to ask by market, you also have to ask a lot of things. So there's no short answer, but it's doing just fine and sustaining me very, very well. Thank you. And you could live very well yourself because it's a totally transferable skill. And this is what I would love to tell everyone when they come on calls, but I have to have people who take those calls. It's a totally transferable skill and you can learn it. And it's not actually that this difficult. Just keep showing up, keep applying it and learning it. But you need to be consistent, patient, and you need to trust it. Uh, and you, you've got to accept there's no 100% system. Uh, and you've got to take your losses and always size for losses. Um, assume success uh, so that you take the trades, but size for losses. Hi, Francis. Any idea what the Bank for International Settlements is doing? Keeping its head down and trying to avoid too much publicity. I think um, it doesn't want to be on the end of too many pitchforks. 
Um, but it's also establishing alibi. A lot of the guys in there have written an article or two about, you know, what a terrible system it is, as if they had nothing to do with creating it in any way. Um, so that it's all, it's all, I, I call it, you know, our system is like fecal matter. They, they're like a bunch of people who've gone to the toilet and then look at it and go, this is awful. This smells, this is sh shit. You know, as if they had nothing to do with the construction thereof. Um, it's kind of like disowning their own feces. Uh, this is how, this is my phrase for how these central bankers establish alibi. Um, you know, it's yours. You created it. You consumed that. You put that process into it, and that's the output, you know, um, and it does smell, and you made it. Uh, so don't look at me. Um, thanks for your time. Are you planning to do the same on a schedule basis? Uh, we are kind of ad hoc. Maybe I should. Oh, you know what we are thinking of doing? Crazy Francisism, squeezy, squeezy Japanesey t T-shirts. Other memes like putting, you know, bits on the block to transgenderize yourself, all sorts of other silly stuff that I say that some people think are amusing. Um, we're thinking of Reset Sniper t-shirts, merchandise. Oh, it's all just capitalism. He just wants to sell you t-shirts. Yeah, I know. It doesn't matter. If you like it, I don't care enough. If you guys like it, I'll do it. Otherwise, I won't. Uh, and we'll put, uh, we'll do a limited run of 100 of the best, and then they'll go. We'll have, a, we'll have a spring, an autumn, and a winter, and you'll get the meme, the Reset Sniper joke meme with nice logo, good quality, and you can buy a t-shirt. Tell me if you'd like it. If you don't, I won't. Honestly, I don't mind. Uh, it's not like I need whatever margin you make on selling a T-shirt on a on a 20,000 sub YouTube account. But it's fun. And if you want it, I'll do it. If you had 10,000 rant, rant, oh, that's the beginning of the problem. First name, last name. You're starting off in rant uh, in South Africa. And you don't want to miss out on this opportunity. Which trade would you bet it on with leverage? When you want to use high leverage, you really got to concentrate and have the timing right. And most people don't do it. And you think now is the moment, and then now just turns out a fake out moment. So be careful with the leverage. Rather be sure and be able to stay in the trade, especially in the beginning, the vulnerable part. Otherwise, you get shaken out and you watch it do anyway what you thought it would do. And you just got three losses. And then eventually your account size was a third of what it was. And you bet you're playing with peanuts. Uh, and you make uh, on the trade peanuts um, when you could have been bigger. So sizing, don't make a sizing error, um, especially with the Ryan keys. Try see if you can flip those Ryan keys to Dolaris and have a Dolaris based account. Dolaris is of course dollars, and I'm not talking about um, Zimbabwe dollars either. Um, when should we get into the, sh the WFC? I still like it, and I'm looking at it as one of my puts, and I actually have it short. But I got in earlier, and it's still in profit. I've got a couple of thousand pounds good to it, uh, and it's it's looking good for me. But it's not in its it's not in its capitulation stage. Um, Matthew, where can I find the USD KRW uh, plus five hundred and uh, IG index for the spread betters? US guys, not sure. Uh, you in Canada? Mm, tough one. I live in the US. Can't seem to find an exchange with a Korean one. Peter, I'm sorry, I, I can't answer the US stuff. See your 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 control structure is so awkward that um, brokers don't want to deal with the bullshit that goes with having American clients. Uh, I know IG has it, but uh, Canada, I'm not sure. Matthew, maybe interactive brokers. It's a possibility. We're not sure. I've said it before, but I haven't checked it. Man, their platform confuses me. Sell different color wigs. Different color wigs. I could sell hats. I call myself the man of three hats. I need to do it. Um, why don't you trade on a social trading site like eToro so we can copy you? Ah, copy me. Ah, you want to? You want your pace car? You also can make a lot of money from being copied. Um, I've seen those things and I've thought about them. Yep, the brilliant. We do a peeing off the roof pattern uh, T-shirt, definitely. Man peeing off the roof would do some funny memes. Um, uh, it could be fun. Okay, guys, uh, it's petering out. I've enjoyed checking in with you. Uh, did I say all I had to say? Uh, the big, big corporates, watch that GE, that Dell, that AT&T as well for short setups. Watch that. Um, uh, watch that. Uh, what were the other two? The two car makers, uh, General Motors and Ford. It's very important. Uh, watch the high yield debt as well. 
Rip Italy, says Sophie. Um, yeah, it's a sad thing. Love our Italian people and friends. It's been a tough one for them. Um, good, guys. Uh, yes, rather learn to fish than be handed fish. Gangster Grievous, you're absolutely right. I use that one often. This is a skill that you'll learn that you will own whatever we have, whatever the control structure delivers to us after reset. Being able to manage money, read a chart, is one of the most valuable skills you will and can have. I've timed when I bought houses. I charted property. I charted everything. Timing everything and buying less. Often that you get 50% more of something just by waiting a little longer and showing patience and trusting your skill. It's about building confidence in your skill set so that you can make informed decisions which could see you postpone making certain purchases and accelerating making others, switching into various things. I mean, I'm going to be holding yen of the fiat and, and dollars and I'll direct it and you can do all of that. Um, and you've got, as I say, uh, you've got the Bullion Vault link. If you, It's totally optional. No one has to do anything, but it's the best that I could find. And they happen to have an affiliate scheme. I didn't look for an affiliate scheme first. It was the best for me from all of them. And I met, uh, when I say I met, I followed the owner of the company and watched very, very considered. Again, name drop. It was a while ago. Very considered, very stable guy. I saw his analysis of what he thinks gold could do. Um, and he said on, he kept going on the low road, you know, in the worst case scenario, he did one of the most comprehensive gold and uh, silver based analysis as I've seen very professionally delivered. Um, there's nothing wrong with Mike Maloney. He seems a very, very good guy. He's just this uh, bullion vault was better, cheaper, etc. cetera. Um, Dutch photographer. Hello. Okay. Dutch photographer. I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you. Um, and we'll see you in Holland for some pictures. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Website guy. Um, and au revoir. Salute, share, and like. I've got one more equity I'm dying to tell you about. My premium guy said you can have it. Um, it's another one with lead leak, but you can't have it yet. You've got to share me. Share me. Give me up some subs. Love me. Love me a long time. Okay, I hate it when those guys, meh. these YouTube channel guys are always like, they sell for ages, oh, and they want you to sub. Yeah, do it if you want to. If you don't, don't. It's all good at the end of the day. Have a great one, um, and we'll catch you later, and I hope you enjoyed it. Bye for now. And then he startles, looking around, trying to do a graceful departure. Where is the end button, he says. Shriek, shriek, shriek. Here's a send feedback button. No, that's not the one I want. Um, that's a live button. I'm already live, I thought. Where's the end me now button? Ah, oh, help, help, help. Pull the plug, he said. Oh, dearie, dearie me. So much for graceful departures, he says. Um, let's just see. Come on. Too many screens. Too many screens. Ah, uh, end stream. I needed to go full screen. On that rather ignominious note, sleep well. I'll catch you later.